Okay then, so we've looked at this root component now and we've even updated the HTML which is output to the DOM and we've stored some data on our component object and we've output that to the DOM as well. But as we go forward, we'll need more than just one single root component for our application. We'll need different components for different parts of our web app. So we have our root component up here sitting at the top. This is the mother of all components. And we could create all of our code inside this one single component, this one file. But for large apps, it's nice to keep things modular and create different components for different parts of the application. For example, we could create a component for the navbar, for the sidebar, for a blog post. And then also we could nest a comment component inside the blog post. So all of these three components here would be nested inside the root component and then this comment would be nested inside this blog post component. And that's generally the way we structure our components and how we can nest them inside each other. So let's do a little example of nesting components and create this one right here, a navbar that we can nest inside the root component. Okay then, so we want to make a navbar component and then nest that navbar component inside this root component app.view here. So first of all, let's go to the source folder and create a new file and we'll call this navbar.view. And by the way, I'm always going to start my component files with a capital. That's just kind of convention. Some people don't use that, some people do. Anyway, we have this component now and remember there's three parts to a component, the template, the script object and the styles. So let's do the template first of all, and we'll keep this pretty simple. Now inside, what I'd like to do is a nav element first of all, and inside the nav we'll do a ul, then a series of li tags and inside those anchor tags. So let's just copy this first of all and paste it down below a couple of times. We'll have a home link, we'll have an about link and a contact link. Now, we don't have to worry too much about the href attributes at the minute. I'm not worried about this. I'm just showing you how to create more components and then nest those components. So that will do for our template. Keep it nice and simple. Next, we'll do a script tag. And if I do script and then tab, because I've got the Vue.js extension installed in uh, VS Code over here, then it creates this default object for us. Now, Export default just means that we're exporting one thing and we're exporting this object right here. So the first thing we're going to do is give this object or this component a name. So we'll do a name property first of all, and this will be called navbar. The next thing I'd like to do is create the data function. And remember, this is a function and this function returns an object. So we don't need to put any data inside this component at the minute. So let's just leave this for later in case we do. So that's the second part done. The third part is the style at the bottom. Now, I don't want to bore you too much with CSS in this series. So I'm always going to keep the styling pretty light. And later on, when we come to do the full apps, what I'll do is use a third party library called Materialize, which is based on material designed by Google, a bit like Bootstrap. And that's going to give us some utility classes so we don't have to spend a long time in the CSS. Anyway, let's just do a few little styles to make it look at least a little better. We'll target the nav first of all and say text align is going to be center. Then we'll target the ul inside the nav and we'll say padding is going to be zero to strip out the default padding the browser provides it with. Then we'll do the li tags inside the nav. We'll say display inline hyphen block. That's so they sit next to each other instead of on top of each other. The list style type is going to be none and that will remove the little bullet points and finally the margin around each li item to separate them a little bit is going to be zero okay so let's save that now we have this component file pretty much done but at the minute it's not really doing anything it's just sitting around and we're not rendering it to the dom now how do we do that well we know that app.view this root component that's rendered to the dom and this is always rendered to the dom so what we need to do really is nest this navbar component inside this component somewhere in the template so that then it's output to the DOM as well. So how do we do that? How do we take another component 
inside this root component and then nest it in the template. Well, first of all, what we need to do is import this component right here. So we know we've exported it down here. That means we can import it from another file. Now, to do that, I'm going to go inside this script tag and say import navbar from and then inside quotations dot forward slash, which means the same directory as this file because it is. Then we want the navbar dot view file. Now we don't need to say dot view. Vue.js figures that out for us. So what we've done is import that component into this file now. Now, because we're only exporting one thing and we're saying export default here, when we import that thing, we can call it whatever we want. I could call this nav if I wanted, but I like to keep things the same. So I'm going to call it navbar. Just makes sense. Okay, so now we've imported it, but we also need to say inside this object for the component that we want to use it inside this component. So how do we do that exactly? Well, let's come underneath the name property and we need to register it by saying components. And then this will be an object. Don't forget your comma after this object. And inside this object, we can register whichever other components we want to use inside this root one, whichever other components we might want to nest up here. So we can give this component a local name for inside this component. We can call it anything we want. You could call it nav or you can call it another thing. I'm going to call it navbar again, again, just to keep everything the same. And then we need to say, OK, well, what is this component equal to? Where did you get this component from? Well, we're getting it from here. So we want to set it equal to this thing, navbar. So we'll paste that in. So now we're saying, OK, inside this root component, we're going to register some components that we want to nest. One of those components is going to be called navbar. I've decided to call it that. And that's equal to this navbar that we've just imported. Now then, because this name and this name are the same, we can use a bit of ES6 to shorten this and take this off. And we can only do that because both names are the same. If they weren't the same, we couldn't do that. So anyway, now we have this navbar component registered inside this root one. So now we can nest it inside this template. And the way we do that is by making a tag and then putting in the component name, whatever we called it right here and nesting it like so, and it self closes. So then if we save this now, we should see this navbar component and the template from that component beneath the H1 in the browser. So fingers crossed, and we do see it. it's right there. Now let's just add a H1 above this UL or H2 and we'll say menu just so we know what that is. Save it and see if that updates and voila, there we go. So that is how we nest another component inside the root component. So we create that component file first of all, the template, the object and the style. We export that component, then we import the component right here inside the root component. We register it locally inside this component object. Then we can nest it like so in the template. And we could do this with as many different components as we like.